Hi everybody, I'm Luna. Welcome back to Luna Oi. At the time of recording this video, the Black Lives Matter protests in the USA have been happening for nearly three weeks. As I'm sure you know, they started as a single protest in Minneapolis, in which they seek justice for George Floyd. But almost immediately, the protests spread to all over 50 states in the USA. And even now, hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world are showing solidarity to protesters in the USA. One of the stated objectives of protest organizers is to defund the police in the USA. The police system in the USA has been horrifically unjust and violent for decades, especially towards people of color and most especially towards black people. Black Americans are harassed by police constantly, and they are arrested and murdered by police far more than any other ethnicity. But the police in the USA are unjust towards everyone, and I believe this has a lot to do with the structure and foundation of the police. The police in the USA originally began to catch escaped slaves and to suppress organized workers, mostly immigrants, in the 19th and early 20th centuries. I, for one, believe that the police system in the U.S. is unreformable, and public safety in the USA needs to be completely reimagined. Watching hundreds of videos and pictures that show how brutal the U.S. police are has made me think more about the police system in Vietnam. And based on my experience of living in Vietnam for nearly 30 years, I see a lot of difference between the two systems. The government in Vietnam, including the police, is not perfect. But I do believe we do a lot of things much better than the United States. And I hope that our example might be useful for Americans and people in other countries around the world trying to reimagine what their justice system might look like. So, in this video, I will talk about the police system in Vietnam and how it works under socialism. I have done a lot of research for this video, and I will try to be as honest and neutral as possible. Really, I just want you to understand how our public safety and security system works, so you can decide for yourself if we have some good ideas that might work in your home country or not. First, let's talk about the national budget for police in Vietnam. According to our official national defense book, in 2018, we spent about $5.8 billion on our national defense. I've been doing a lot of research about this, and as far as I can tell, this amount of money was used for both military forces and public security. I don't have the exact number of expenditures for the police specifically in Vietnam, but one thing I know for sure, it was way lower than the $5 billion. In the meanwhile, the USA spent around $180 billion just on their police system. So the USA, a country with a population of 328 million, only 3.5 times higher than Vietnam's population, has a police budget more than 36 times higher than Vietnam's entire national defense budget, which includes police. Wow, the police system in the USA is really expensive, huh? In Vietnam, we have four main police divisions, and they are all highly specialized. Traffic police with yellow uniform, security police with green uniform, coast guard with white uniform, and special forces police in dark green uniform. Each type of police in Vietnam will have a different rights and powers. For instance, traffic police can only deal with traffic crimes. Security police only deal with civil crimes. Coast guard works only on the sea. And special forces usually just work at night after 9 p.m. when other kinds of police are sleeping. Or they can be used in some real special and dangerous situations such as uh, protecting important people or chasing dangerous criminals. Long story short, I have barely ever seen them on the streets. Of course, all four main divisions work together, helping each other whenever there's an emergency. But each kind of cop will be responsible for completely different areas. For example, recently, there was a dangerous murderer who escaped from prison in Guangnam, and he was hiding in the jungle of Da Nang, the city where I live. This is a serious case, and because we are near the sea, so all four forces of police have been working together for days to try to catch the escapee. Security police and special forces police go to the jungle and search for that guy. The Coast Guard keeps an eye out just in case he tries to escape by ocean. Traffic police are responsible for setting up road checkpoints at all entry and exit points to the jungle. Of course, our park rangers are also on the lookout. So that's an overview of how the police specialization system works in Vietnam. 
Each type of police deals with different types of crimes, and they never cross over each other's power. This can prevent any one cop from having too much power. It's totally different from the police system in the U.S., where one police officer can deal with many different kinds of crimes and even non-criminal situations. Now, let's talk about the weapons that Vietnamese police bring with them on their working days. It's a bit different depending on what division they are in. For traffic police, I can tell you from my daily life and seeing traffic police all the time, they usually don't carry any weapons at all. Of course, in extreme emergency situations, they have access to many real weapons, but they are all in armories and must be signed down for specific situations. And first, they also need permission from higher-ranking officers to check those weapons out. Last year, in 2019, some members in our government suggested that we should allow traffic police to bring handguns with them on the job. Due to an increase in the number of people who tried to fight against the traffic police officers, which led to a lot of injuries and deaths to police officers. This law was not passed, and due to COVID-19, it hasn't been discussed since 2019. So as if now, it's still the case that traffic police in Vietnam do not carry firearms. I personally talked with a security police officer, and he told me that in their normal working days, they don't carry any weapons, not even the rubber bullet guns. There are three main levels of police. Criminal or ward police are the lowest level and most common. District police are above ward police, and city or provincial police are the highest level and they mostly deal with critical cases. Actually, the most common police officers, ward and district police, are not permitted to carry firearms at all. Only the highest level, city police, are allowed to carry firearms, though usually they do not, unless there is an emergency or special public security event, such as a, a visiting ambassador or diplomat. For emergency situations where police do carry firearms, there are 11 specific situations where police can fire. For five of those 11 situations, they have to give a warning, either by words or by shooting in the air. There are only six situations they are allowed to fire without any announcement. Those are super dangerous situations such as fighting terrorists or kidnappers. If the police break that law, the punishment is very severe. They can end up in jail for life. Last year, there was a video clip of a police officer threatening a farmer by pointing his gun at the farmer's head. This caused a huge scandal, and a lot of people and newspapers wanted the police to offer an explanation. So the police officer was immediately placed under investigation. It turned out that that farmer threatened to kill that officer. However, the police officer overreacted, and actually the police officer's gun was loaded with pepper shot, not real bullets, and there were no shots fired. Now, I'm sure the whole time I've been talking, you have been asking yourself, isn't Vietnam a police state? Isn't the police very powerful in Vietnam? Aren't the police violent and corrupt here? That's up to you to decide. I can tell you that in almost 30 years living here, I never had any problem with the police. Except for a couple of times I've been pulled over by the police. And even then, they just gave me warnings and let me go after politely telling me how I broke the law and asking me to be more careful. I've never seen police patrolling with guns. I've never seen anyone threatened with guns. And I don't know anyone else who's had that kind of problem, except for traffic tickets and things like that. The only time I've seen police carry guns myself is when guards are outside of embassies and military bases, and a few times when I've passed by special diplomatic ceremonies. Other than that, we just don't have armed police patrolling our nation at all. Of course the police are not perfect. There have, of course, been examples of bad cops, just like anywhere else in the world. But the amount of police corruption and brutality has been highly exaggerated by anti-communist propagandists. I guess that some of you might have heard about Mother Mushroom. Mother Mushroom is a Vietnamese anti-communist reactionary. But in many anti-communist blogs and newspapers, she has been called a hero fighting for human rights. She wrote many anti-Vietnam blogs, which I believe strongly distort the truth about Vietnam. But before I talk about that, let me give you some information that most news sources don't give about her. In 2016, Mother Mushroom was arrested for working with foreign espionage agents to spread disinformation about Vietnam. She called for the overthrow of the Communist Party of Vietnam and calling for violence during otherwise peaceful protests. Originally, she received a 10-year sentence. 
But after one year, her sentence was commuted, and the government decided to exile Mother Mushroom. So today, she lives in the USA. Mother Mushroom has been paid tens of thousands of dollars by anti-communist groups for her activities, including a 50,000 euro payment from a Swedish organization, the Civil Rights Defenders. If you want to know more about these human rights organizations, I have a couple of videos you can check out, links in the description. But needless to say, these NGOs have their own agendas and shouldn't be seen as trustworthy or honest when it comes to Vietnam. Anyway, let's talk about Mother Mushroom's report about the police. Basically, Mother Mushroom wanted to investigate the number of times people had died in police custody. She was paid by these foreign anti-communist groups to gather evidence to prove that Vietnam police is violent and always willing to kill anyone who opposes to them. Well, Mother Mushroom named 31 people who died in police custody from, I don't know, maybe 1975 until 2014? These accounts are very vague and heavily imply that each of these individuals was murdered by the police. She left out some key information. Out of those 31 deaths, 10 of those people were really murdered by the police or died of police brutality. And in each of those cases, the police involved got severe punishment for what they did. The other 21 cases deaths caused by disease, and the government provided full documentation from hospitals to prove it. So, wow, after years and years of researching, with the help and massive funding from many overseas human rights organizations, she could only find a total of 31 deaths in police custody. And more than two-thirds of those were natural causes. Now, I am not excusing for those 10 cases of police murder in Vietnam. I think it's a shameful any time a Vietnamese police officer acts with brutality. And I'm glad that those police officers who were responsible were caught and convicted for their abuse of power. But I wonder why these European human rights organizations are not as interested in looking into deaths in police custody in the USA, where Mother Mushroom now lives. Why isn't Mother Mushroom investigating the cops in her new home? I tell you what, Mother Mushroom, let me help you a little bit. I'm only a random small YouTuber without any help from any human rights organizations and no funding. But I believe I can help you to find out how many people the US police killed, not only in their offices, but also right on the streets, in public. According to a research by CNN, in just nine months from 2015 to 2016, the number of in-custody deaths in the U.S. was 1,348. Again, 1,348 people died in police custody in the U.S.A. in just nine months. So yes, it does make me sad and ashamed that 10 people were murdered by police in the police custody in Vietnam over 40 years. But I really think Mother Mushroom should be a lot more concerned about being killed by police in custody where she lives now. Mother Mushroom, here are some other numbers you should look at. In 2018, the U.S. police fatally shot a thousand people. And in 2019, they fatally shot a thousand and ninety-nine people. What about black people? How many of them were forced by the police? This report shows that in every 100,000 people, there were 273 black people who had violence inflicted on them by the police. Meanwhile, there were only 76 white people. By comparison, in Vietnam, in the first six months of 2020, there were a total of five incidents in which police had to fire guns in public. Two of them were cases where police fired each other and no one died. I remember that the first case happened when a group of police officers went to a beer place for dinner. They had argued with each other and one guy decided to take out his rubber bullet gun and shot at his co-worker. The second case happened when the police A came to police B's room and the police B asked the police A that like he should take off his shoe, but the police A refused to do that. So while well, the police B just took out his gun and shot at the police A's tie, and that's it, that's the whole story. He got shot just because he refused to take off his shoes before entering the other police room. Other two cases were the police fire rubber bullet guns in the sky to try to disperse the crowd. One case was when a group of four men threatened a group of police. So one police officer decided to shoot the gun in the sky to scare them. The second case was in the street where a group of young people like wanted to have a motorbike racing or something like that. 
and then the traffic police came and they tried to disperse that group so one of them shot at the sky that's it the last one was actually a very serious case that was a police senior lieutenant who shot and killed five people in a gambling den he ran away and hid for about two weeks when the police found him he fired back so we had to shoot at him so in short three out of five instances of police discharging firearms in vietnam so far this year were police shooting at other police and 100% of police shooting deaths are police. Going back to our report, it says, Police officers are more likely to use force on black Americans. And according to a 2016 study published by the American Journal of Health, black men are nearly three times more likely than white men to be killed by police intervention. Comparable figures for other countries are not readily available. In general, more Americans are subjected to the cogs of the criminal justice system than in many other countries, and more end up in prison too. Black people in the U.S. are only 12% of the population, but they are 33% of the prison population. Alright, so if you still believe that Vietnam is a state police, and it is as bad as it was described by those anti-Vietnam, anti-communist groups, let's see the difference between the U.S. and Vietnam police in dealing with protest. As I mentioned in my previous video, every year Vietnam has about more than 200 worker strikes. And now, I will tell you how the police deal with them. They just stand there and watch. It's a law that all companies in Vietnam have to have unions, and the workers have the right to strike. So when workers strike, as long as they don't cause any violence, the police are not going to arrest them. But what would happen if there's violence against police in protests or strikes? Well, in 2017, there was a group of farmers who kidnapped 30 police officers. I discussed this incident in detail in a previous video. But long story short, after a few days, the Vietnam government decided to meet all the farmers' demands, and we even announced that no one will be investigated or go to jail. Wow, such an authoritarian country, right? Two years later, in a related incident, about 30 gangsters prepared grenades, gasoline bombs, knives, and other weapons, and decided to preemptively attack the police. The Vietnamese police had to fight back, and three of them were burned to death. Yet the police only killed one of those gangsters out of almost 30, their leader. You can check out my video, How the Media Lies About Vietnam, if you want to know more. As I said, police in Vietnam are not perfect. There are quite a few bad cops in my country such as the case I mentioned earlier in this video of the senior lieutenant who got killed by our special forces police. He was very obviously a bad cop in Vietnam. According to his family and co-workers, he was a good cop, but he was also a gambling addict, and that changed him and ruined his life. Another example of a bad cop in Vietnam was in Hanoi. Our police found out that he was a gambling addict, so he got fired. Not long after that, he decided to become a drug dealer. His team not only dealt with drugs, but also assassinated people for money. He officially received the death sentence, but he's still in prison now with his sentence deferred for the time being. Last year, another senior lieutenant went to prison because of corruption. She worked for the corruption and smuggling department. She received $50,000 to have a woman slander that woman's boyfriend. They threw a bag of drugs into that man's car then reported to the police. Of course, that man was arrested, but our police also did a thorough investigation, and that was how we found out about that senior lieutenant. She officially received a seven-year sentence, and now she's in prison. Okay, so I have tried to give you the most objective information I can find about the police here in Vietnam. Yes, we have some crooked and corrupt cops. But for the most part, I do believe that the police here in Vietnam tend to care more about people, care more about their human rights, and always try to seek for peaceful solution first. Generally speaking, when Vietnamese police see a problem, they would try to talk to them and solve the problem first. I actually talked to some Vietnamese police officers while preparing for this video. They told me that they believe it is very important for Vietnamese police to feel confident that the people are supporting them, and that they support the people. One official said it is the people, not the government, who define their success. And as for my personal opinion, I believe, for sure, Vietnamese police will never harass you on the street when you're just walking around in your neighborhood. They will never arrest you right in front of your house for just being black and not having your ID card with you. 
They will never put a knee on your neck until you die, like what the U.S. police did to George Floyd. I never heard of anything like that happening. I've seen no evidence of that happening. It just doesn't happen here. I can tell you that, in general, Vietnamese citizens are way less scared of the police than the U.S. citizens. Actually, it's very common where we uh, drive past police, and EJ, who is from the USA, will get very nervous. To me, it's very funny because I don't even think about the police at all when I see them. So when I see anti-communist propaganda that acts like Vietnam is total horrible authoritarian police state, I honestly can't help but laugh. If we are really so terrible, why have they made up fake news and lies? Why is it so easy to prove that the accusations are false? Meanwhile, they are totally ignoring everything that's happening right now in the U.S. Now many of those who call themselves the defenders of human rights in Vietnam are now on the side of the U.S. police. Here are some horrible racist posts I've seen from these Vietnamese anti-communists. These anti-communists sound just like white supremacists. They say that the U.S. police are just doing their job, and the brutality is necessary, and they say a lot of racist things about black people. You see, they are just a bunch of fucking hypocrites. If they really want to fight for human rights as they say when they criticize Vietnam, doesn't that mean they should be on the U.S. protesters' side now? Well, in conclusion, there are some bad police in Vietnam, yes. But it's just a very small part of the whole police system here, especially compared to police in many capitalist countries. Anti-communists try to portray Vietnam as a police state, where the state violently suppress the people. But, I'm sorry, the evidence just doesn't show this. Our per capita prison population is ranked 118 in the world out of 223 countries. That's less than the USA, the UK, Singapore, Thailand, the Philippines, Israel, Australia, Taiwan, and many, many other capitalist countries. But anti-communists like to cherry-pick the worst stories and distort the information to make socialist Vietnam look especially evil. But by comparison, Vietnam actually has much less violence and incarceration than most of those countries in Asia, where capitalists see as capitalist assist stories like Taiwan and Singapore and Thailand. But when things are openly and obviously bad in the USA, they either shut their mouths or even side with the capitalist brutality. Unfortunately, there are many racist people in the Vietnamese diaspora, and many of them are Vietnamese American. In fact, most anti-communist Vietnamese are very racist against black people and favor extreme right-wing and fascist politics. This might sound surprising at first, but if you look through the social media pages of Vietnamese anti-communists, you will quickly see that this is true. Vietnamese Americans have, unfortunately, been exposed to a lot of Western anti-black propaganda. And maybe because their skin color is lighter than black people, so they think they are superior? Or maybe they think that by siding with white people against black people, they will be better treated by white society? Or maybe they are just a bunch of freaking Nazis. Especially since the outbreak of COVID-19 and both Trump and Biden blaming the disease outbreak in America completely on China and trying to compete for who can be most xenophobic against Chinese. Of course not all Vietnamese Americans are racist. I have a lot of good comrades who support Black Lives Matter. But I would say that the vast majority of Vietnamese anti-communists are very racist, right-wing, and fascistic. Recently, there was a Facebook account which was called out for being racist against black people. She was Vietnamese American and she posted on Facebook making fun of the death of George Floyd. She wrote it in Vietnamese and I don't even want to translate that to you. It was horrible. Other Vietnamese people saw that and tried to report her post, but Facebook seems to not care at all. A lot of other Vietnamese criticized and attacked her for what she said. And finally, that woman was scared and deleted her post. Her husband also had to apologize. Another anti-communist Viet American also posted disgusting words about the Black Lives Matter movement. He claimed that all black people are criminals and they don't deserve to leave. He's only on the side of CIA and FBI on dealing with black people and communists. A lot of people also reported his post, but I'm not sure if Facebook cares about that or not. Recently, there was a famous Vietnamese doctor living in Australia, Nguyen Văn Tuấn. He works for the University of Western Australia. He did some research and claimed that African-Americans score lower on the SAT than whites and Asians. 
solely because of inferior innate ability. This is, of course, totally bullshit, and he got called out by a lot of Vietnamese people about how wrong it was. I'm sad to say that I could not find any screen capture of that post, because shortly after being criticized, he deleted it. Many people saw and read his post, and they confirmed what his post said. This was not the first time this racist doctor wrote something bigoted. Last year, Nguyen Văn Tuấn published an article in a newspaper and claimed that being gay is solely due to environmental influences. That was a Vietnamese Twitter critic of his article. It's not uncommon to find Vietnamese who think that being gay is a disease. Mr. Tuấn's article support this view and rumor that has been cited as a scientific evidence for forced conversion therapy. Another example of a racist Vietnamese American is Tila Tequila. She got famous from MySpace, then she had a reality dating show in 2007. She is a super crazy Trump supporter, and now she is openly a fascist. She posted a picture of her in front of a concentration camp in her account. She worships Hitler and calls herself Aryan Asian Goddess. What? She posted many hate speeches on her Twitter account against black people and the Black Lives Matter movement, and finally, her account was forever suspended. And of course, when talking about racist Vietnamese Americans, Andy is at the top of the list. Just in case you don't know who Andy Ngo is, he is a right-wing propagandist. He rose to prominence in Poland origin, where he began his work as so-called journalist who would go around filming anti-fascist activists, trying to give intel to known white supremacists, all right groups like Brown Boys, and even groups which are known to be extremely violent murderers like Atom Waffen. In fact, Enningo delivered as a kill list of anti-fascist journalists to Atom Waffen. He has created a lot of fake news and distorted the truth so many times that I'm not even going to bother listing it out. I will just link to another video about him in the description if you want to learn more. Anyway, Enningo has been spreading fake news and disinformation about the Black Lives Matter protests since it started. And the thing that annoys me the most is that he got embraced by a lot of American TV stations because he totally fits their right-wing racist and fascist agenda. Since he's not white, racists can point to him and say, See, conservatives aren't all white. People of color share our views. So again, you can see the overlap between the extreme right-wing views and Vietnamese-American anti-communism. Finally, I have a personal story. I recently made a post on Facebook in support of Black Lives Matter and got brigaded by dozens of Nazi Vietnamese Americans who harassed me and posted racist all right memes in my comments and DM me to harass me. I got scared and deleted my post and set my personal Facebook page on private. So sadly, I don't have any evidence. But if you don't believe me, just go into a Vietnamese anti-communist group and make a post in support of Black Lives Matter and see how people respond. You will quickly see for yourself how much overlap there is between all right white supremacism and Vietnamese anti communism. <sighs> Thinking about those horrible racist Vietnamese people makes me sick. And it makes me sick that Vietnamese people would not support Black Lives Matter. Vietnamese people have been victims of racism and oppression for a very long time, including in America. We should all know and understand the systemic oppression and racism, not support it. The main reason I am talking about all of this is because I want to say that Vietnamese anti-communists who attack our Vietnamese public safety system and police by saying we live in a brutal authoritarian police state, they are totally hypocrites. 25% of the world's prison population is in the USA, and 10% of world's prison population are black Americans even though they are only half of 1% of the world's population. Yet, Vietnamese anti-communists are against Black Lives Matter and side with the American police in oppressing black people. Just keep that in mind whenever you read anything from Vietnamese anti-communists. They are hardcore right-wing fascistic movement, not freedom fighters they claim to be. I know things are changing in the US, and protesters over there are dealing with horrible things every day. I'm sending my support to all of you. I wish the best for all of you. Keep fighting the good fight. The world is watching you. You are not alone. I am happy to see that some American cities are beginning to consider defunding the police. When you think about rebuilding your public security systems, maybe you can look at Vietnam and see if there is anything you can learn from how our public security system works. I don't think you could use our exact system. Our government is very different from yours. 
But maybe you will get some inspiration for changes you can make, or it can help you imagine some ways your society could be rebuilt differently. No matter what, I hope you found this interesting. I just came back from my hometown and had a chance to talk with a lot of Vietnamese people, young and old, and all of them know what's going on in the U.S. and how brutal the U.S. police are. They all send you their support, and we all hope that you will get what you ask for. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe. See you next week, and remember, Black Lives Matter. Bye. This is a fun fact about Mother Mushroom. I mentioned earlier in this video that Vietnam exiled her and she moved to live in the USA. At that time, she got a huge support from the anti-communist groups over there. The support for Mother Mushroom was so huge that she even had a chance to meet Donald Trump in the White House. But recently, when the COVID-19 pandemic started, she criticized Donald Trump for his terrible response system. Well, that pissed a lot of Vietnamese American anti-communists off and they started calling her Poison Mushroom or the traitor of the US. So the people who once supported her for spreading fake news about Vietnam now are mad at her because she said bad things about their beloved president. So Mother Mushroom, I hope that you're doing well in your new home because Vietnam will never welcome you back.